In the vast silence of the galaxy, where frozen giants drift and barren rocks wander in darkness, there exists a single world that defies the ordinary. A planet that does not conform. A world that refuses to be quiet. K218b. Over 110 light years from Earth, hidden in the constellation of Leo, this distant planet orbits a cold, red dwarf star. Dim to the eye, yet now burning brightly in the minds of scientists everywhere. It is not the light of that star that captivates us. It is what we have found swirling in the clouds around this distant world. For years, we searched the skies for a shimmer, a chemical whisper, a mathematical rhythm, anything to suggest we were not alone. Now, on this veiled planet, wrapped in mist and strangeness, we may have found something extraordinary. At first, it was only a trace. A thin veil of water vapor, barely detectable. Then came carbon dioxide. Methane. A symphony of molecules that make Earth's biology possible. But now, the James Webb Space Telescope has seen deeper. It has cut through the clouds, scanned the invisible spectrum, and found what may be a voice from another world. A molecule called dimethyl sulfide, DMS. On Earth, this is not just a chemical. It is a signature of life. Created by plankton, drifting in our oceans, feeding on light. To find it here, in the atmosphere of a faraway planet, is like seeing a distant campfire flicker in the cosmic night. And then, something even stranger. Dimethyl disulfide. A more complex molecule, shaped by ecosystems of life. Invisible threads, drawn by biology. K218b is no ordinary world. It is a Hycian planet, a strange class of exoplanet, with a thick hydrogen atmosphere, and a global ocean that may never end. It is 2.6 times the size of Earth, and nearly 9 times its mass, but its heart may be water. An endless sea beneath thick, alien skies. And it sits in just the right place. Not too hot, not too cold. A gentle orbit in the habitable zone, where liquid water could persist for billions of years. Where life could grow. And evolve. And speak. DMS is not a random chemical. It is created by life. Every molecule of it in our air was born in a living cell. To find it light years away is not coincidence. It is communication. Niku Madhusudan, a leading scientist, said it clearly. We may be seeing the chemical footprints of alien life. No longer science fiction. No longer fantasy. This is data. Real, reproducible, astonishing. So what kind of life could thrive there? Some imagine oceans full of microbial plankton, drifting just below the surface, capturing the dim light of a red sun. Others imagine early ecosystems, simple creatures feeding, reproducing, caught in an alien tide older than Earth's history. Some even dream of larger life, soft-bodied swimmers, flickering with bioluminescence, rising through the water to breathe the hydrogen sky. On Earth, such life reshaped the atmosphere. On K218b, it may be happening now. In real time. A planetary transformation, witnessed from afar. But now the question rises, should we speak back? Should we send a message to this world, knowing it will take over a century to arrive? Knowing that if someone hears it, they may already be watching us? Some scientists warn against it. That contact could bring danger. Or disruption. Or damage. Others say it is our destiny to reach out. That we have been heard already, in radio signals, in light, in the hum of our machines. The conversation may have begun before we even noticed. While we debate, new missions are preparing. The next generation of telescopes, LUVOIR, HEBEX, LIFE, designed to read exoplanet atmospheres like open books. And others dream bigger. Time, perhaps we are not alone. Perhaps we never were. But if we are not unique, then how should we live? What kind of stewards will we be, of Earth, and of the cosmos? Some propose a new kind of treaty. To leave worlds like K218b untouched. To watch, to listen, but never to colonize. 
a sanctuary across the stars. Because even if the life there is only microbial, it is still the first. The first we have found beyond ourselves. And that makes it priceless. K218b is not just a world. It is a mirror. Showing us what Earth was. And what Earth could become. An ocean under clouds. A breath taken across time. A whisper carried by light. Not just a signal in the dark, but a reflection of life itself. Once we asked, are we alone? Now we ask, who else is out there? And, will they understand us? The universe has waited billions of years. It may be answering this now. One molecule at a time. One breath from an alien ocean. The signal did not fade. It echoed, through data, through dreams, through the halls of every observatory. And though K218b remained distant, it began to feel, close. A world once unknown became a mirror we could not stop staring into. A place of possibilities. A question we could not answer, but also, could no longer ignore. The molecules were clear. The atmosphere told a story. But now, we wanted to see more. To peer beyond the clouds. To gaze beneath the waves. To uncover the beating heart of this alien ocean planet. But how? A world 110 light years away is not easily reached. Even light takes over a century to complete the journey. And yet, we dreamed faster than photons. In underground labs and orbital think tanks, missions were born from the fusion of physics and imagination. One mission was codenamed Neptune's Eye. A space telescope so powerful, it could capture weather systems on exoplanets. Storms raging over alien seas. Clouds that breathe chemistry. Lightning that might spark biology. Another, more radical, Project Trident. Nanoprobes, no larger than grains of rice, equipped with AI mines and light sail wings. Launched by lasers from Earth's surface, accelerating to near light speed, they would take only 25 years to reach the system. A new kind of explorer. Small, fast, intelligent. Not just to observe, but to listen. To learn. To ask. And while Earth prepared its instruments, speculation spread like wildfire. What kind of life would create dimethyl sulfide on such a world? Artists painted glowing jellyfish drifting under lavender clouds. Biologists hypothesized sulfur metabolizing algae, feeding off warmth rising from volcanic vents deep below. Some even imagined ecosystems under pressure, creatures with translucent skin, living in perpetual twilight beneath the hydrogen sea, using sound instead of sight, singing in frequencies we've never heard. Could intelligence rise in such a place? Or would it remain forever microbial, alive, yes, but unaware of the stars? And if intelligence did emerge, what would it think of us? Would it see us as ancestors? Invaders? Children? Or would it not see us at all? Meanwhile, a quiet debate brewed across Earth. Not in science journals, but in ethics councils. Temples. Parliaments. Should we intervene? Should we leave such worlds untouched, protected from human ambition? A new declaration was proposed, the Interstellar Biosphere Accord. A cosmic promise. To observe, but not contaminate. To respect life, even when it cannot speak back. Some nations pledged support. Others hesitated. 